uh, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me. This is an eclectic group. I think you guys are doing a very big service. Uh, I wish financial advice is taken as seriously as the medical advice, but I think there's a lot of opportunity there. And today, while I'm standing here, yesterday, you saw what happened. Yesterday, two things happened. One was Einstein's 100-year-old theory that gravitational waves exist was proven. But those gravitational waves gravitated the equity markets worldwide. But what is driving that gravitation is credit risk everywhere. Whether you hear India, whether it is an 8 lakh crore problem, 13 lakh crore problem, 15 lakh crore problem, whether it is the developed markets, whether it's China. And there is one more thing happening. Normally, when you run a race, someone who runs faster wins. Right now, there are four e economic regions, US, Europe, Japan, and China. The way they are trying to debase their currencies, it's a race to the bottom means someone who comes last wins. Now, if that race is happening, someone has to fall. I hope there's no big falls, but on the credit side is something where the problem is, and my objective in the next 20, 25 minutes will be tell you what you should look at, and this is pure common sense. We have already had some brief episodes some time back. Fixed income funds will remain a large part of any investor's portfolio, either through funds or small savings schemes, PPFs, NSCs, or fixed deposits. Just to tell you, the entire household income, 55% is in physical assets, which is gold and real estate. 25% is in defined benefit products like fixed deposits, PPFs, NSCs. The remaining 20% of which 5 or 6% is mutual funds. So there's a, when the rates are going down in the small savings everywhere, I think there is an opportunity. People will look for avenues where fixed income funds will fall in. But what will matter is, and this is what I will talk about, what is risk? Uh, what is the risk in fixed income funds? How do you evaluate? And for you, some case studies. Uh, fixed income is a very simple business. It's pure mathematics. And human greed comes in the middle. If you have two options, when security giving you 8%, one giving 10%, you will gravitate towards 10%. It's very, very simple like that. But the, how those 10% returns are coming, it's also very important. In that context, just to tell you at DSP BlackRock, the credit risk does not sit with the investment team. And this is the conscious decision we took about 12 years back. Why? Because in India, the credit markets are not liquid like they are in the developed markets. If you buy a security, you have to assume you will be married to that security till the time it matures. Liquidity is available in very, very high quality names. So credit due diligence has to be continuous. When you give a limit or buy something, you have to ensure that you'll be holding it till maturity. And during that maturity, during this period, a lot of things can happen. I won't bore with you this uh, schematic here because this is again in common sense and any one, if you had to give a f money to your friend, you will look at what kind of net worth that person has, what assets that person has. Similarly, a, a due diligence has to be done as far as uh, credit risk is concerned when you initiate that. Now, the request can come either from the portfolio managers, you evaluate based on the promoter, industry, operating strength, financial strength, credit support. One more thing especially in the case of India. 
if people tell you that I have bought securities in my portfolio which are below double A minus, I'm very sure that I'll be able to get my money back because the company has strong cash flows. This is all sugar coating. You have to realize why that company is rated double A minus or below. Because the company maybe is in a growth industry. When you are growing, you need capital to expand. Easiest capital to get is debt capital because cost of debt is lower than the cost of equity. Companies get debt financing at 12, 13, 14, 15 percent. What is the cost of equity for them? Someone said there is no cost of equity, but there is because investors expect an ROE. ROE in excess of 20, 25, 30 percent. So debt cost being less, they borrow more. Borrowing means their balance sheets are leveraged. So when you go down the credit chain, you have to be very, very sure how you are going to get your money back. Rating agencies are good, but it is your own due diligence that matters. Uh, so every credit actually is screened through by the risk commit committee, and we have, uh, you know, uh, Naganath, myself, we are part of that credit committee. Again, this is the entire process how it goes through. This is the ratings I spoke about. Ratings are more for optical reasons. You have to do your own due diligence. You can see in this, even a double A minus gets an A1 plus. And we saw what happened to some of those names. So don't get enamored, fixated by the credit ratings. My personal experience is credit ratings are a bit behind. Why they are behind? Because they are acting on the information provided by the company, which comes with the lag. Even actually for listed company, it is the sell side analysts which are better uh, barometer of how the company is doing. And another barometer for uh, listed companies is, which if you can also the, your, see yourself, what is the total debt of the company and what is the total market cap of the company? You just look at this ratio. The ratio of total debt to total market cap will tell you how healthy a company is. The lower the number, the better it is. And sometimes equity market predicts what's something going to happen on the debt market side. I'll just give you case studies, how involved we are as far as uh, credit is concerned and how do we evaluate and why we have kept it outside. This is the transaction where DSP BlackRock only participated. I don't know how many of you are here from Delhi. Delhi, in Vasant Kunj area, there are three malls, Emporio, Promenade, and Ambience. This is a commercial mortgage-backed security, which is, has a security of DLF Emporio. If you have visited DLF Emporio, it is the only property of its kind in India. When you enter, the ground floor is international fashion ladies. First floor is international fashion men. And second floor is Indian fashion labels like Ritu Kumar, Manish Malhotra, Tarun Tahiliani, and so on and so forth. You will find this is the, one of its own kind of high-end luxury mall in India where there's a waiting list to get into the mall. It is 97 to 98% occupied. The lease rentals are two times the interest that has to be paid out. So it, every year about 110 crores of lease rentals are received by this property. And the total payout on the CMBS is about 55 crores. When we looked at this transaction, 
we actually went and spent a day, talked to the mall operations guys, see actually what is happening. And this particular transaction, although it has a prefix called DLF, DLF Emporio, it does not have DLF risk. That is the reason in DLF, which is a single aerated asset, this is a double aerated asset. An asset which generates cash. And you have to ask why this transaction was done by DLF Emporio. This property was earlier financed by lease rental discounting. Lease rental discounting is a very low risk product in every bank's portfolio. But the problem is lease rental discounting is it traps all the cash flows. Whereas through a CMBS, that means entire 110 crores of annual rental receivables were taken up by the banks. Whereas in this, 55 crores cash flows are accessible to DLF. And this has done very, very well for us. Look at the statistics here, occupancy rate, number of tenants. Actually, this property has one thing very special. Majority of the rentals are performance linked. I wish majority of the products that we sell are also performance linked. But this property has rentals with performance linked. One or one and a half percent of, of, the, of the gross, gross sales. Likewise, we like this company, no one came in. This company was six months away from completion of a power plant. And if you recall, Prime Minister Modi ji inaugurated this power plant in Tripura, gas-fired power plant. And immediately after purchasing this security, within six months it got upgraded. It's access to excellent cash generating assets. This is something that I want you to worry about, concerned about. In the current market volatility, a lot of securities are there which are collateralized shares. A lot of covenants might be broken. You need to ask question to your uh, mutual fund managers, how are they managing this? And especially in FMPs, having Loan against shares, securities, and FMPs is a crime to me. You don't know when there's a covenant breach and you'll have to exit the security. And you can't sell it also. There are certain names where we are not comfortable, big, big names. This we got out of it because this company had a, power, uh, had a uh, chemical plant in Egypt. They acquired it. But the fundamentals are very, very bad. A $1 billion transaction has become a $1.8 billion transaction. How to select fixed income funds? Please look at long-term ratings only. Don't get confused by short-term rating A1 plus, A1, A2. Number of rating down the last 12 months you should ask. What outlook changes have happened? What is the total exposure to companies where ratings have been downgraded or outlook has been revised downwards? Total exposure to a group. So if I have these two funds, Fund A and Fund B, which is a better fund? Anyone? Fund A is a better fund as compared to Fund B, which is much higher risk. But when you are looking at the portfolio, please ask the portfolio managers, what is the investment thesis for all securities which are below AA minus? Ask what is the rationale? Is it backed by some securities? Can it be exercised? And something which is new to you, and this is something I call performance thermometer. And why I am showing this to you, you are in a financial advice business. When you sell a fund to an investor, you most of the time looking at based on the past track record. But you have to look at what is the past track record, how it is likely to behave. So we have three funds here. You look at these, these chart top one has different sedimentary layers. You can see that if you do well, doing well is green, doing badly is red. The green moves from top layer to the next layer and so on and so forth. And why it is important for you? 
If you recommend a fund today with some kind of foresight in future of six months or nine months, and after six months you go to your client and say, he reads about that fund doing well in the newspaper, he will feel happy that you recommended him a good fund. And this is something easy to understand. So the first fund has had a very good performance track record, but has been losing a lot. So it will be coming as a negative fund in a lot of places. The second one is maintaining it. But the third one is which one actually coming out very, very strongly. And most likely will be a top quartile fund in one year for some time. Whereas the second first fund is definitely be a fourth quartile fund. So this is something I think maybe you should look at. I call it performance thermometer. You can call it performance momentum. This is the dedicated team at DSP BlackRock, which looks after risk, which is different from the others. Just to tell you, it's very quant-oriented skills, people from IITs, IIMs, MIT, you know, who are dedicated for risk. Why? Because we don't want to get influenced by the portfolio managers. And you must have seen portfolio managers. It is very difficult to, they don't want to listen to anyone. So if that's the reason why at BlackRock and DSP BlackRock, we have kept this thing outside completely and given the similar amount of respect. That's all I had to say. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, are there any products uh, or any tools which uh, IFAs could buy to gauge the risk matrix of uh, different funds? Are there any such analytic tools available in the market? So there is no one size fits all kind of uh, tool available. Uh, certain uh, fund evaluators do uh, give some uh, respect to the credit side of risk. But I would say you will have, there are very simple things. You will have to look at the portfolio, ask them long-term rating, double A minus or below, how much exposure you have. And that is all the pressure points. I think look at, focus on that part. There is no point in looking at AAA. SBI, there is government of India behind that. Okay, I cannot give limits for SBI. It's too big a thing for me to give. But I would be interested to know if I have something which is down the credit chain. So, Crystal does a good job. Crystal, uh, you can ask for some information, but a package kind of tools, I, I think at this level would be, uh, which would be very difficult. You know, you have systems available, but most of the systems are homegrown systems. Okay. So, uh, it's unfortunately, I don't have a specific solution in mind for you guys. But it is common sense. Fixed income is very, very simple common sense. Only greed is what has led us to some of the hiccups that we have seen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.